Welcome back to Meaningful Conversations Live. This is Beata Severin Reed, your host, coach, and speaker. And if you would like to get to know me more, you can go to my website, Beata, B E A T A, lifecoaching.com. And other than that, it's Tuesday noon, and I'm here for you to create positive change to help you to create positive change and more meaningful life with my guests, change makers, entrepreneurs, successful business owners. Today, I have very special guest, Gabriel Rial. Rial. I'm sorry. I, I, I screw it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Gabe, you are an entrepreneur, you are a business, successful business owner, uh, but one podcaster, but one, two actually words that you shared with me, content creator is, is really attracting my attention and we will talk about that. But before, please introduce yourself again, because I think I screw a little bit of your <laughs> name and we want everyone to know who you are so who you are what's your story how did you get here okay cool no problem so thank you first of all better for having me on uh my name is gabriel leal i uh am the owner and founder of real leal productions i am a uh live stream host but i also am a content creator i uh also have started a business where i do um remote producing as well, which is a new industry that's kind of popping up a little bit there. But um, I'm a father of four who spends um, a lot of his time, you know, trying to work really hard to uh, make make it or who, uh, excuse me, uh, to work really hard, excuse me, to try to find a really good work balance with trying to be a first time entrepreneur. And then also to be a family man and also to be able to share um to be also, also to be able to want to share my passion with everyone else which is what i do every night i do an actual live stream show five nights a week so to put all that together it is a very active very busy lifestyle but um i enjoy it very much i get to help other people i get to share i get to uh make connection and engage with people this has always been the fun part of what this journey has started. And I, I, to tell the truth, I did not start really doing any of this, learning how to do all this stuff until the beginning of the year, this year. So 2020, I didn't, I, I really didn't know, uh, excuse me, hardly anything about uh, doing a live stream. I, I knew nothing about podcasting. I knew nothing, any of this. It's just, uh, it was a passion that I found that I didn't know that I had. Um, or learned a new skill that I didn't know that I was going to be really good at. So it's really just been practicing and doing it over and over again. But again, like I said, it was uh, at the beginning of 2020, it was a challenge that I wanted to do with myself. I wanted to get out of my own little comfort zone. And, you know, part of that was learning how to, to speak in front of a camera, learning how to speak in front of people. So taking those steps and, and really challenging myself from what would, what was the normal for me is what kind of set me on this course. And once I kind of pushed myself a little bit past those boundaries, I decided that uh, I wanted to go and start my own production company as well, learning how to do all of this. So this whole year has been a, you know, the, 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 the word that everybody talks about, has been a big pivot for me and um, I really do enjoy it. So, I, so I seems so seems like the 2020 is very wonderful year for you. You discovered your true passion and you what is the most important I think you went after that. You went after your dreams and now oh my gosh, if someone don't know you, I'm surprised because you are <laughs> everywhere. You are on LinkedIn, you are streaming on YouTube, on uh, Instagram and Facebook. So I think yeah. you are everywhere. <laughs> uh, so yes. please, so today topic is using our values to create value. And I picked that because of you, because when I was learning and we met a little while ago and I'm 
following your story, you always talk, you always talk about values. Yeah. And I know that it has a lot to do with your grandmother, with your grandparents. What is the story? Please like how, how as a kid did you decide how did you know what our values how did you define them well as as you know growing up i grew up in an entrepreneurial household uh my grandmother and grandfather started their own business uh back in the 1950s when it was a little bit harder to do these sort of things so um they learned the values of hard work they also they also learned the values of also you know being kind and, and, and also sharing what their, what successes and everything that came along with being an entrepreneur with other people. So seeing what they created and seeing what they helped did to help uh, build a community uh, because it was a smaller community at the time, you see that they were, um, you know, you see that they were also uh, not only strong-willed people but they were also very um they were very centered and, and faith-based and very grounded very humble even though they became successful they also remembered what the struggle was for them to get to that point point. and knowing that that was one of the things that they kind of taught us as their grandkids that, hey this is what you're going to have to learn how to do if you want to become successful in anything that you try you know um, it's going to take a, trusting a lot of, of in your own faith, in your own belief, and in, in your own values and work ethic and really lean and depend on that a lot. So that was that was one of the things that they, they really showed us. And not only telling us about it, but also seeing it firsthand when people would come in into their business and it was a hard time. They might be struggling, kind of like right now, like everybody's struggling right now, right? So it's very, right. You know, it was sort of that environment where they, if they knew uh, it was hard for people to, you know, pay for something or to need this, they knew each other and they, they knew, you know what? I can here take the food. If you need it, you know, you have to, to feed your family, do what you have to to take care of. Um, you know, that was one of the things that I was, I was very, uh, I was very thrilled about when I started. You know, that was something for me that I, uh, excuse me, when I paid, when I, when I first learned what it was like to, to, to really watch and see people um, be compassionate and be kind. That was something that for me was one of the first things that I learned and, and saw my grandparents do that I knew that I, I myself was taking that in. And, and as when I got older and started wanting to do that and be more helpful, I did that myself. So learning how to do these, learning how to become just a, a good person, right? That was one of the greatest things that I was thankful for that they kind of taught me because it's even to this day, it's stayed with me. And, um, even now doing what I do and learning the skills that I have, learning how to do live stream and learning how to, uh, you know, learning how to create and do these other things. I have plenty of people who come to me now asking, hey, how did you learn how to do this? And how did you, um, you know, how did you, uh, you know, take the time to figure all this stuff out? And I, and I pretty much just walked them down the, the same way that I learned. And and I shared it for with them, and, they, and most of them would be like, "Hey, how much do you charge?" Or what? No, no, no. It's not. It's not even about charging. It's about paying it forward. Um, it's about doing those things and sharing these things because, again, money will come. Right? If you really work hard and you're passionate about it, and you start doing the things that you want to start doing. Money will find its way for you. If that's the ultimate goal, if that's all you care about, uh, I don't think that's what you're going to find. That's not what you're going to get. So I really don't worry about the, the the money part of it right away. I know that with hard work and what I do and what I share and what I create, you know, the results will start to, the results will start to produce that. So mm. that's why I say I kind of base it off of if somebody needs something and they're really in a pinch or, you know, and I have the ability to help, that's what I do. So I, again, I have people, hey, how do I do this? 
cool. Let's go walk through it real quick before we do this, before we go live, whatever it is. And I try to figure it out. And again, it's just what I am and it's what I do. And, um, you know, I, I know that, uh, I, I know this in myself because I got to see it again, like with my grandparents and even with my own parents. So it was something that I continue to pull forward. And I hopefully that's something that gets passed on to my kids as well. They see me doing these sort of things and go, wow, okay, cool, dad. That's what you did. I, I want to do that too. I love, I love what you are sharing with us because young generation, and it, it was always like that, but sometimes we forgot about it, that they, it doesn't matter really what we what we tell them, or it doesn't really matter what our parents tell told us. The most important is the behavior that they taught us. Yes, so the, the values came from the behavior. Did they really follow their words? Did they really stay committed to what they were saying? So you were seeing it, and now you are, uh, you say, paying it forward. That is beautiful. And everyone listening now, what are you paying forward? What is your value? And relating to what you just said, if you had to attribute your success to just one value that you learned from your grandparents, what would it be? For me, it is kindness. It is kindness. Kindness. It was, again, them knowing in, in their heart of hearts that people need help. And, and turning around and being able to help those people again, um, not worrying about the money or the value of what they were giving away or what they were helping somebody with. They weren't worried about that. They, what they were worried about was, is this person going to be all right? Is their family going to be okay? Is, is they going to be able to make it through what they need to make it through? And that's what was so important to me. And I saw that and I see that every day now. And I kind of look for that. I kind of look for those in, in, in everyday life when I see people doing something. Uh, it, it, it's because it's such a wonderful thing and it's, it's the easiest thing to do. It's the easiest thing to be kind, to share, to do anything like that. So that's why I love that one simple thing, that simple value that you can keep no matter what. Even when you're in a bad mood, you can be kind. You know, that's right. So I, I love that. I love doing that. And I love I love kindness altogether. It's it's very important. So this is why this is why one of the things I, I love about what my mentor taught me, excuse me for real quick for you. My Absolutely. Mentor me, what my mentor talks about is, you know, he says kindness is cool. And hey, I, I'm all kindness about. is cool. Wow. I love it. I love it. And do you have any story that from your own experience or maybe your clients that kindness took you farther than, you know, other value? Yes. Um, so being, and this is just, uh, you know, something that like, like I was saying, I was again, helping somebody trying to figure out how to get something done on their computer with the, you know, with the technical part of doing a live stream and something else, they had been frustrated with it and couldn't quite figure it out. So they connected with me and they said, Hey, do you have time to walk me through this? Of course. Uh, no problem. So I, I literally, you know, walked this person through what they needed to figure out. And this was like on the deadline because they can, they were going to be going live in like 30 minutes or whatever. So quickly we jumped on and this was like in the middle of me uh, doing something else for uh, somebody else. And I said, okay, cool. Let's jump on. Let's take care of this. I walked them through it. We went through step by step real quick. We figured it out. What, what, what was wrong? You know, she got on her way. She was able to do what she needed to do. And then afterwards, you know, she kind of said, you know what, I have, um, I have a couple of clients that I want to refer to because of what you did. Wow. And, and, That's uh, amazing. Um, I, w I would like for them to connect with you and give you the opportunity to um, showcase what you do. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I wasn't expecting anything in return. I didn't want back anything in return. I just, you know, wanted to help somebody out. And it, 
I get it when somebody's in a pinch, you want to be able to say, okay, if I can help you, I will help you whatever to the best of my abilities, I will want to do that. But I never expect anything in return. Uh, uh, sometimes a simple thank you is the best thing ever. So when I received something like that, I was a bit blown aback, you know, and I was going, okay, wow. I mean, you, <laughs> thank you for being kind. You don't have to do this. She goes, you know, she's like, no, you, you really helped me whenever I needed it. You didn't even ask, uh, hey, I need this, I need this or this, I need this time. I need this much. It's going to cost you. I need all, you didn't ask any of those questions. You just jumped into action and got me to where, what I needed to get done. And I, and again, I was really grateful for that. So. Wow. So it's the, again, it's the confirmation of you being a good person and that the kindness is paying forward for what you do for people. I, I love it. Gabriel, um, my next question is, do you have any regrets? Mm. Yes, I do. Um, I think that's, I think everybody should have that. If you see somebody going, uh, I don't know. No, there's, everybody's got regrets in their lives. And I believe it. Um, some people's are bigger than others. For me, my biggest regret was the fact that I waited this long to change, to become mm -hmm. uh, the person that I am now. I let a lot of things, a lot of external factors control uh, a lot of the outcomes that were happening in my life. And it wasn't until I came to my own realization that I needed to change, that I wanted to change, that I started to, again, see my life turn in a whole different direction doing I mean again five years ago I wouldn't even thought about doing this right what, what we're doing here now it, it would have been a foreign concept I would have been that kind of person to say oh yeah let's sit down and talk and let's have a quick conversation on the air live <laughs> watching I would, have, I would have been I would have been like no no way let's not do that um so you know it, again and it and I think that was part of but again, it's part of what your journey is and what your makeup is, is trying, it's taking the time to figure those things out. I, I don't think I would have been ready back then. Um, that's the only thing that I, but I, I, but I, again, if you're asking about regret, I wish I would have found this five years ago. Um, because I would have been more staunchly, uh, entrenched in what hopefully will become my career full time in doing this and helping other people's create and, and learning and running my own production company and doing all of these things. I would have been five years ahead of the curve now. Uh, but you know, I can't change that again. It is what it is. It is a regret that I didn't get there soon enough. All I can do is concentrate on what's going to happen the next five years from now. So now that I know that I have this and know that I'm passionate about it, that's what I'm really working on and concentrating on just about every single day. From what you just said, I think um, the one thing that really jumps out to me is acceptance. We can, we all, like you said, we all have regrets that we wait and usually it's about waiting too long or not doing something at all or not trying. But the most important thing from what you said is acceptance. Accept where you are today. Be happy with finding your purpose. And like you said now, it's not doesn't matter what was the last past years. You cannot change that, but you can change your next five years. So look in the future, work in the now. And I think it's what you are doing and you are doing on a huge scale. I'm really impressed with all what you do. What, wherever I go, I say, oh, Gabriel, hi. <laughs> yeah, you are live on all platforms. So that is amazing. And you said that you just started it at the beginning of this year. So everything is possible when you when we decide, yeah, when we say, yes, I'm going to do it. So how how is it for you? How do you start to work with change? You said that you were waiting. You knew that there was a time to change, but you were waiting. And most of us, we do it. So now if someone is there listening i feel i should change i know that there is time for change but how do i start you know it, it's it's pretty simple to start 
right? You start by just taking that first step in whatever it is that you're trying to figure out. So if it is that you want to change um, the way that you look or the way that you feel, you know, with health, well, you might want to start with changing eating habits or exercise or that sort of thing. If you're, if it is about your job, if you're miserable when you get up in the mornings to go to work, look at what it is that you go want to be passionate about. Change the way that you see, um, you know, change the way that you see life. It's, it's, it's the hardest and it's the simplest thing to do. It really is. So when you finally decide to make up your mind and realize that you can get past whatever fear, insecurity, or, you know, procrastination that you're doing, you know, if you're waiting for that perfect time, there is, I've never known anyone who's just found that perfect time. I don't think there is a perfect time. I think you just, you just start, you just start doing, um, if it is getting up 10 minutes earlier every day, something as simple as that, changing, a, changing a simple habit and really, um, really challenging yourself is what is what's I think uh, really important because again, um, you know, if you want to change, you're, you're, you're really going to have to, uh, step outside of what you're comfortable doing. You'll just end up right where you're back there and it's okay. Um, if you change and it doesn't work right off the bat, don't give up, man. It's failure. That means you're learning, right? I mean, I don't know anybody as a kid who ever just stood up and started walking. Right? <laughs> That's fall. right. We had to fall down once, twice, three times. But as a kid, we're never told. As a child, you never understand or, to or ever heard it say, hey, you can't get back up and walk again. You know, there's nobody telling you. It's just you getting up and doing it again. Your mind's instantly telling you, get up and try again. Get up and try again. If you take that same philosophy in what you're doing and wanting to change your life, you, I don't care who you are, you're going to be pretty successful. Um, I've I've heard Tony Robbins saying the story or asking one of the audience uh, person in the audience, when do you give up on your on your uh, infant? When do you give up on your little child when they are trying to walk? Are you going to ever give up? No, you encourage them go go one more step one more step yes so it's very related to what you just said and this first step the first step that you just mentioned every journey every thousand miles journey or whatever journey starts with the first step and we have to take it and the best time is now <laughs> yeah yeah and again as i said at the beginning of the year, it was my first step in challenging myself um, in a year long challenge of changing everything. So it was, you know, hey, today you're going to get up a little earlier. Today you're going to journal twice. Today you're whatever it was to, to, to get you motivated enough. And for me, it was, hey, making sure I do uh, instilling things like for me that it works for me is affirmations and, and, and doing meditations. And, it, it cleared my mind and it got me in a better state of mind. And that's what kind of helped fuel me to keep going forward. Even when everything in my body or everything in the negative parts of my mind were telling me, Hey, this is not going to work. Don't, don't do it. You're just going to, you're going to fall flat on your face. And I didn't listen to it. And I don't still, I still don't listen to it. Um, you know, people have told me, Hey, you're, you're going to do this or you're not going to, you're going to burn out. You're going to do all of these things. You know what? Okay. That's great. I might, I might burn out. I might. Um, but you know, that doesn't mean that I, it's going to stop me from not doing it anymore. I mean, I did my first season of live shows. Uh, I did 135 episodes. Wow. In one year, in, in not even a year. That was in, in, in a time period from, uh, excuse me, from March all the way till, uh, August. So, wow. You know, and it, and it was, it, 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 at points it was very hectic, but again, I, you, that's the thing about learning, right? you you might, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to figure things out as you go along. So I figured out a way that 
I took six weeks off. I started back up again. I'm actually doing it now, and I'm back up at episode like 21 at this point for my second season. But I've learned how to, to regulate and do things a little bit easier on myself so that I can make the duration of what I want to keep creating. So, yeah, it gets tough, but you know what? It doesn't mean you stop. Um, and you just find inspiration from other people, from other things, even even like somebody like you. I'm just going to use you as an example. I, I, saw, okay. I saw you skydiving. <laughs> that was pretty fun. That was pretty awesome to see. And I said, you know what? That's got to be uh, something to really get over to be up there and say, you know what? I'm jumping out of a moving plane. I don't know. I'm relying on parachutes to hopefully save my life, but it doesn't get <laughs> it. But to take the risk and do it anyway. To see, right. that, you know what? She was brave enough to go up there, do that, take a risk. Why is it so not? Why is it the same thing that you can't do in everyday life? To go out, go up there and say, you know what? I'm going to take the risk today. Um, I might not get the results that I want, but at least I'm going to try and see if I can. And, that's, and, and again, if you fail, guess what? You're learning. You figured out. You're well, you you're sharing so many great wisdom thoughts. I cannot even keep up. I will have to listen again. It, it, I love what you just said. The fail, your failure is, it doesn't mean that it's the end. It, you learn when you grow, when you grow through all of your mistakes. And you said, it's tough, but it doesn't mean that you have to give up. Take a risk, oh my gosh, every single day. Wow, there is like only couple from what you said, but I'm still keeping writing. What? <laughs> so amazing, amazing. Thank you so very much for sharing that. And my almost final question is, what makes you crazy happy that, you know, you start dancing, the jumping like no one is watching you? You know, you know what really makes me happy is to see people that I love and I surround myself also doing very well in life and being very successful. Mm -hmm. I see somebody doing that. I get just as much joy as if I were doing it myself. So when I see somebody who's, you know, does something and it and, and they accomplish something that they really wanted to really get done in, in their life and it becomes a, a sort of a milestone for them, that is awesome to see. Um, it's awesome to see, you know, People who are, are really trying and they're putting themselves out there in the world make make their goals and that sort of thing. Because, again, that's what it's all about whenever you start putting uh, a goal out there in the world to say, hey, this is something that I really want to accomplish. Um, this is something that I really want to be able to say that I did on my own. So if it's uh, – and I'm going to use this – if it's writing a book, if it's speaking in front of a crowd, if it is uh, – you know, gosh, right, doing poetry, creating a song, uh, learning how to dance, whatever that goal or accomplishment is, starting a business, right, any of these things. When you see start some, somebody start doing well, again, to me, that's, and, and you were, and you kind of, you kind of helped them get to that point as well. That's, to me, that's one of the biggest joys goes, okay, cool. I, I helped that person and, and, you know what, I don't want, I don't need accolades. I don't need any of that. I just want to make sure that whoever it is that's going out there always remembers how they got there. And that when they see somebody else doing the same thing, they turn around and help them do it as well. I think that's what it is. It's re reciprocity. That's what we all live for, right? I mean, to, to, to turn it around and do it for somebody else. For me, that's mm. what's super joyful in what we do in any aspect, whether it's life, love, business, any of that. Um, I, I love to see people really, really be successful in, 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 in their own definition of success, right? Not mine, not yours, but in their own definition of what success is. So to see them be joyful and do what it is in that there's, to me, there's nothing better. I love that. 
You are such a good person and all what it takes is kindness. And you said kindness is your one of your top values. So my, again, almost last question then, because you, you just said something that I have, you mentioned journaling and I have to go back to that because you also use content creator as a part of your passion and business. So is there any correlation is journaling helping you with becoming more creative or not? Yes, journaling helps me with everything. And I mean in every aspect. I'm going to tell you, I've said this plenty of times. I've been I've been a big journaler since I was 17. Mm. I've kept journals because, again, that's uh, – to me, there's nothing like picking up one of your own journals that you've written in and seeing your own words from five years – 10 years ago in the past and realize and go, wow, I've grown a lot from who that person was. I'm a different person now from who that person was that wrote this. That's my handwriting. That's me expressing my, my soul out on a piece of paper. And I look at it and you look at it and go, wow, this is, I mean, every creative idea that I have, every uh, thing that I want to uh, share emotionally, everything that I, I, I journal a lot of these things because again, they help me in many aspects. So if there's something that I feel like, Hey, I need to tell this person, we really need to have a serious talk on a subject or whatever it is. I kind of journal down what I want to say and what, what, wow. To, 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 that, way, that way I kind of have a, an outline or a template to go, uh, talk to or approach somebody or any idea, right? It works for, that's why I said journaling will help you with anything. So if it's like wanting to talk about learning gratitude, right? People are writing gratitude journals. I love that. Being grateful for the things that you find in life, finding the smaller things that keep you uh, centered and grounded. Man, do that. But you know what? Do it for everything. You'll start seeing how much amazing it is. For mm. what it is. So even on your bad days, journal. Right. Because right. You, you go back and look at those and go, you know what? I oh, I had a bad day that day and I really did something I should have done. Whatever it was, whatever it is. See, it's a, it's a good way. It's To me, it's pretty much keeping your memory and your soul on paper and mm -hmm. sharing it there. So that's why I, uh, I love doing it. And I think it's um, important for somebody that they don't do it to start. And you don't have to write down journals. You can record journals. Do whatever it is you have to do. If you don't feel like you're a good writer, turn on the camera, record yourself on your phone whatever your response, your emotions, whatever you're feeling in those moments, do it. I mean, it, it, it's clinically proven. It helps you It helps you get clear your mind most of the time to the things that you might be thinking about. So if you need to be thinking about life and bills and, oh, my God, the schedule I got going on, how are you going to know what you have if you don't see it down through your own eyes and on paper and go, well, or however you have it on there and do it? So I said, you know what? Just journal. It's it's one of the best things that you'll ever do for yourself. So I wow. Love it. I, love it. I love it. And I, I, I'm a journal person. So I love that you share that passion as well. And looking at what everything, what is happening in the world right now, what would be your advice to your younger self and maybe your kids? What What is the one value that you would like them to learn today because of what is happening and take with them in life you know I, I think the one thing that i again uh, i want my kids to know and really appreciate is uh you know learning how to be kind in the love some you know love uh love is a really love is a really powerful tool um because it opens your heart to a whole different world mm -hmm. you start learning how to love and i mean Love eternally, love unconditionally, learn um, what it is to love. And, and just like anything in life, I'm sorry, love has its good and bad things. But you take what you learn from it, and it fuels what you do with the rest of your life. So if you find your passion in life, and it leads you to, you know, uh, helping other people, or if it helps you become successful in business remember that you uh that it was the love of somebody else that helped you get to that point it was 
such a wonderful thing. And I want my kids to always remember that. Be, no matter what, even when you feel alone, as long as you love and love yourself, right? All right. You'll always be loved. You'll, 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 you'll never be without it. So you know what? You, you might have a partner. You might not have a person next to you. As long as you love yourself, though, you'll be good. Always. Um, you know, everybody talks about that now. Self-compassion, self-love. Show yourself these things. Yeah. Learn it. Wow. That is so great to hear, hear it from you because not too many men are talking about love oh, no. in that way, self-love. And I think it's the issue that, that because they don't talk about that, they don't show to their kids maybe, and then the kids don't learn. Or there are so many people it's like, oh, we don't talk about that at home. It's We know, but we don't talk about that. It's like some kind of secret topic that they are ashamed to talk. And people, when they don't feel love on the inside and they don't love themselves it can be difficult to talk about that as well yes yes oh definitely most definitely um so that's why i say it's really important to you know figure out a lot, a lot of things in life whenever you um whenever you want to start learning what it is to love yourself right yeah um there's a lot of things to figure out. But again, once you figure that out, um, again, you'll never be alone. You'll never be without what you need in this world. Because again, you know, you know how to love yourself. You know how to take care of yourself. You know how to do all these things. And it goes, I, I try to teach, I have four kids. I try to teach them that. Um, my son, I have $3 and a son and I want my son to learn the same thing. Um, Hello. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. It went away for a little bit. Um, it's okay. Uh, again, that was like, like I'm saying. You want you want to be able to share those things and be open, right? That's. I I love to do that with my kiddos and and let them know. I I, I want to have these open talks and discussions, and to me, that's what part of love is. Is I love and trust you enough to say, hey. Even if you've done something bad, even if you've lied, I don't care. I, I just you know, just know that I love you and I want you to uh, I want you to do what's best and do the, what's best for mm. you. If you're not going to take care of yourself, nobody else will. So do that. Do that I, I, I always tell them, do that for yourself first and then um, do it for other people because, again, it's hard to – it's hard in this world to become a people pleaser and try to live that lifestyle and try to live and take care of yourself. That's tough. That's a, you know, that's a tough hat to wear is to try to please other people before yourself. And, um, you know, that, I put, that's why I said, I try to teach them that. I, I hope the lessons they're, they're learning those, but again, it's like anything. We learn a lot of things in our lives by our own experiences, but hopefully, a little bit sticks in that subconscious mind that it stays there and it'll always be <laughs> what, what my dad used to say. So I, love I, I believe that they do learn because you not only because you are talk you talk about that because you are showing them like we started. You saw the kindness in your grandparents. You learn from them kindness and love and the appreciation and helping people and it's what you do today and they didn't really have to talk to you much you saw it and i think your kids just gonna repeat what you show to them and you're showing it every single day so they have really great father congratulations thank you so much that i appreciate that and again that's why i love recording these shows and doing them because they'll be left behind for them absolutely They'll see what I was about and they'll know uh, what I really concentrated on for the most, for the better part of my, my life is to help other people and to be kind and, and, and share love. And what I talk about, again, that's, I teach them the same way that I connect with people in real life. So. Mm. I, yeah to... so you are authentic and i love it i love it because i i know you for a while and i see when we ha we talk out of the camera you he is the same he's the same 
up front of the camera and behind the stage. So I, I love it. I appreciate you for being you. And uh, what is the best way to, for people to follow you, to connect with you and maybe find out more about who you are and what you do? Uh, the best place I'm going to tell you is uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, guys. So uh, just type in Gabriel E. Leal on LinkedIn. I will pop up, send me a direct message, an invitation to connect. I always love connecting with uh, new people. Um, you never know. If I find you interesting enough, I might even have you on my show. So that's what I said. <laughs> I love to bring on interesting people. And, and you never know when you're going to find that person that just interests you. That's how pretty much me and Beta met is that I was really at the moment enthralled in watching Michelle Morat. So All right. I her and I started seeing Beta comment a lot on her stuff. I go, oh, wow. She's, she's really, you know, she's really engaged in what she loves to talk about. And I, and we connected and it kind of led to her being on my show now me being her, on her show just having conversations like that and again it, it was just because it's a lot of the same things that i love to surround myself with is people like that who are very kind and compassionate and loving and open and vulnerable these are the wonderful people that are out there in the world and i love finding those people and showcasing them whenever i run into them so Thank you again, Beta, so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. But I, I'm just going to add that you can also find him oh. on Facebook, on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about Twitter, but also you have the website made from scratch podcast.com because his podcast is made from scratch it's amazing please do go and it really doesn't matter where you go because he's everywhere so you're gonna see the podcast where, wherever you go but like Gabe said LinkedIn is his favorite place and uh, it's at 7 p.m central time I uh, believe seven it's uh the second season that's one of the adjustments I made it's actually 7 30. Okay. 7.30 Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Uh, we're look, we, in, we interview interesting people doing interesting things in this world. So. Yeah, there's a lot of fun. I, I've experienced that. So it's a lot of fun. Please follow Gabe, connect with him. And you see, just be kind and it, it will pay forward. Yeah. So Thank you so very much again for being here with me. I appreciate all your wisdom and keep spreading the kindness and love. Oh, always, always. <laughs> until, until I'm no longer on this earth. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's the plan. So, um, you know, again, I said thank you so much for having me on. I love doing these. And, uh, again, I love just connecting with so many interesting people on this world. That's what makes what we do fun. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone who was watching us. If you are on the re watching us on the replay, please do hashtag replay. Let us know what what really speaks to you. And again, connect with Gabe, connect with me. If you need anything, just let's start the conversation. Life is beautiful. Life is kind. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.